The complete Japanese verb conjugation video. In this video, you're going to learn every single conjugation for verbs in Japanese. We're going to be looking at over 250 examples taken from video games to help give you a strong connection to exactly how each piece of language is used. So that by the end of this video, you'll know absolutely everything you need to know about exactly how to conjugate verbs in Japanese. This video is brought to you thanks to all the supporters through the Game Gengo website as well as through Patreon. So if you find this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and if you really love the video, then come join us in the Game Gengo Discord community. Now first, before you learn how to actually conjugate all of these verbs, you first need to know what type of verb the verb you're looking at is. And in modern Japanese, there are two different types of verbs. Ichidan, seen often in your textbooks as ru verbs, and godan, also known as u verbs. And these are the two different types of verb classification in modern Japanese. And super simply, Ichidan pretty much just means one stage, and what that means is that there's only one stage of conjugation. You just drop the ru or the mus, and then add whatever conjugation you want at the end. That's it. Super simple. I wish every verb was an Ichidan. And then there are Godan verbs, and these are a little bit more complicated as they are based on the verb ending, the sound that the verb actually ends on. So how do you tell whether a verb is an Ichidan or a Godan verb? Well good news, there are actually two different methods that you can use to figure out for any verb whether it's an Ichidan or a Godan. So very simply, these two methods revolve around either the dictionary form of the verb or the nai form of the verb, the negative form. First, the dictionary form. Now, this method is a little bit less accurate, but it's easier because all you need is just the dictionary form of a verb. Miru, taberu, kiku, nomu. And so using this dictionary method, all ichidan verbs end in a ru. However, not all verbs that end in a ru are ichidan. Some are actually godan. So if the vowel sound that comes before ru is an e, like ta be ru, the be is an e sound, or an i sound, like mi ru, mi ru, mi, the i sound. If it's an e or an i sound before the ru, then it's probably an ichidan. Probably meaning there are some exceptions. Everything else, every other verb is a godan. So if the vowel sound before the ru is an a, u, or o, then even if it has a ru ending, it's still a godan. Like for example, wakaru, to understand. That waka is an a sound, therefore automatically it's a godan. But, as I said, there are some exceptions and it gets a little bit tricky, like for example, kaeru, to return. Well, that has an e sound before the ru. However, this is actually a godan verb, and this is where it gets a little bit less accurate. Same thing with kiru, to cut, and kiru, to wear. One of them is an ichidan, one of them is a godan. Oh no, how are you supposed to tell which one is which? And this is where using method number two is going to help you out. Method number two revolves around the nai form, the negative form. And this has 100% accuracy. All you need to know is the nai form of a verb and you instantly know whether it's an ichidan or a godan. A hundred percent of the time, if a verb has an i or an e sound before nai, like minai, to not look, tabenai, to not eat, then it is always an ichidan. And if it has an a vowel sound before the nai, like nomanai, noma nai, or shinanai, shinanai, or as we saw in the example, kaera nai for kaeru, you instantly know it's a godan. And this method you can rely on completely with 100% accuracy. However, there are three verbs that don't follow those previous rules for classification. And those are aru, to exist. The negative form of that is just nai, to not exist. Which is regularly treated as a godan verb, however not in the negative conjugation, because it simply just turns into nai. Kuru and suru are two exceptions that we're going to be seeing a lot in this video. Kuru, to come, when in the negative is actually konai, and suru, to do, when that's in the negative, it's shinai. So these are three exceptions that don't follow the previous classification rules. 
but we'll be seeing that a lot in this video. So using a balance of these two methods, you can find out no matter what verb you come across, whether it's an Ichidan or a Godan, and then using all the information in this video, you'll be able to conjugate it into absolutely any form that you want. Like our previous example with Kiru to cut or Kiru to wear, well, we can't tell if it's an Ichidan or Godan. However, when you put it in the Nai form, it becomes immediately apparent. Kiru to wear, the Nai form is just Kinai, but to cut is Kiranai. It has an a uh sound. So in the nai form, i or e is ichidan. So kinai to not wear, ichidan. Kiranai to not cut is a godan. Now we'll learn more about the nai form in this video, but just try and keep some of that information in mind as it can kind of help you give a bit of an idea of what is an ichidan and what is a godan verb, because they have completely different conjugation rules as you'll see in the video. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So first up, we have the dictionary form of a verb. This is kind of like the baseline form for all verbs. It's also known as the plain form or the casual form. In Japanese, this form of the verb can be used both to talk about something you're going to do right now, like I will eat sushi, sushi o taberu. It could also be used to express something that you're going to be doing kind of regularly or as a habit, like mai shumatsu kaimono suru. I do shopping every weekend. And it can even be used to express something that you do in the future, like ashita benkyo suru. Tomorrow, I will study. So some very common ichidan or ru verbs that you'll come across is things like miru to see, taberu to eat, kiru to wear, iru to exist, neru to sleep, and kotaeru to answer. Mi, tabe, ki, i, ne, kotaeru. Right, you can see it's got the e or the e sound. These are ichidan verbs. So the verb miru to look is an ichidan verb. And this dictionary form is just the standard baseline form of all verbs. When you look up a verb in the dictionary, this is the form you see it in. So like here we can see it using a sentence, don't look, miruna. Or like here we can see taberu to eat, Will you eat some custard pudding? Honoka-chan, pudding taberu? And this is the dictionary form, also known as the casual form in Japanese, and this is because it's used in casual speech. So you'll see this form all over the place in things like video games, anime, manga, but also used in real life, especially when you're talking with friends and family. Rose, Ichi means one. As you saw, there was only one rule. Just drop and add the conjugation. Super simple. But Godan verbs are actually based off of the five sounds in Japanese. A, I, U, E, O. And with these five sounds, that is how these verbs are conjugated. So for example, Kiku, to hear. Nomu, to drink. Yomu, to read. Asobu, to play. All of these have an U sound at the end. That's the dictionary form. I is the mus stem. A is the nai form. E is the imperative form. And O is the volitional form. So let's have a look at the casual form for Godan verbs. So this is just the verb in its U ending. Kiku, to hear or to listen. Motsu, to hold on to something. Motsu. Yomu to read something. Kao to buy something. So as you saw, these are all Godan verbs. Now you can know that a verb is a Godan verb by the fact that it ends in a sound that's not ru. So like we saw in all of these, ki ku, yomu, ka u automatically they're Gordon verbs. But you can also tell if they do end in a RU sound, if they have anything that's not an E or an E vowel sound before, like A or O, then you also automatically know it's a Gordon verb. Pretty much just know that every single verb that's not an Ichidan verb is a Gordon, right? Even some verbs that end in a RU, like Kaeru or Kiru to cut. The next form we're going to be looking at is the polite form. 
And this is used when you're wanting to speak in a polite manner, like for example to someone that you don't know, a stranger, or maybe a boss, or maybe someone at like a shop or a doctor, someone you're not familiar with and you want to be polite with them. Well in this situation, you would use the polite form of a verb. Well for ichidan verbs, good news is conjugating them into the polite form is very very easy. All you need to do is drop the ru and replace it with mas. That's it. Finished. And actually, that's true for every single other conjugation. For ichidan verbs, just drop the ru and replace it with the conjugation. So, miru, to look, turns into mimas. <laughs> or taberu, to eat, if you want to speak politely, tabemas. So, very, very easy. Just drop the ru and replace it with mas to make a ichidan verb polite. Okay, so now we have the polite form for godan verbs. Now, as I said before, it is all dependent on the sound that the verb ends in. Remember, kiku or your gu, shinu, that sound, ku, gu, nu. And it's also connected to those five sounds I told you about. So remember, the next thing is i. This is how you turn it into the mas form. You need to change the final sound into an i sound. So instead of ki ku, it's ki ki, and then add mas. So kiku to here turns into kikimas. Motsu to hold, so tsu, turns into chi mochimas. Motsu mochi mochimas. Toyu wake de yushu wa uta uta ye no shokyoku o mochimas. Gokuro sama. Kare nara daiju wa. Watashi ga seki ningo mochimas. Tanomu to rely or to count on someone, the mu turns into mi. Tanomimas. Bigs tachi wa tanomimas. And kau to buy ends in an u, so you just turn it into an e. Kaimas. Dosuru kau kane. Kaimas. And so to turn a godan into the polite form, it all depends on the final sound, and then you just turn that into an e sound, and then add mas at the end. So no matter what sound the verb ends in, for example, ru, kaeru, that would be kaerimas. The ru turns into ri. Same thing with kiru. Kiru would be kirimas. Ri. Every single godan verb to turn into polite, just change that final sound into an i sound and then add mas and you have the polite form. There are two exceptions that you need to be careful of. The verb suru to do and the verb kuru to come don't follow any of the previous rules. Suru to do and kuru to come are exceptions. And so you need to learn how to conjugate them on their own. But they are two of the most common verbs in all of Japanese, so it's definitely worth learning these two exceptions. So, kuru to come. And suru to do. To turn these into the polite form, for kuru, you just want to change the ku into a ki sound. So it's ki mas. So kuru to come, the polite form is ki mas. And same thing with suru to do turns into a shi sound. So it's still that i sound. Suru turns into shimas. Now we just saw that all you have to do is drop the ru for a verb to kind of make this stem and then every other conjugation for ichidan verbs you just attach to the end. Well this stem is actually known as the verb stem or the mas stem. 
And the reason why is because if you just remove mus, you're left with this last little bit, this stem part. Me. Me mus? To look? Me. Every other conjugation, whether it's the nigh form, the potential form, the causative, you just add that to the me. That's it. Super simple. So this is known as the mus stem. And for itchy done verbs, this is all you need to conjugate it into every other form. This isn't true for gordan verbs, but for itchy done verbs, it is. Drop the mus or the ru, you're left with the stem, and then just add the conjugation. And so now for the mus stem for gordan verbs or u verbs, as you just learnt, you need to get that kaeri mus, kiki mus, and just remove the mus. So kiki, kaeri, mochi, nomi, yomi. This is the mus stem. Now, we're not going to go into it too much, but just so you know, this mus stem is actually super useful because you can add a whole bunch of stuff after it. A whole bunch of grammar, for example, like tai, to want to do something. Yomi tai. You just use the must stem with tai. Or like yasui, easy to do something. Yomi yasui, easy to read. So this must stem is quite important to learn. Just remember, for godan verbs, turn it into the must form and then drop mus. So you're left with just that e ending sound. And for the two exception verbs, kuru and suru, for kuru to come, all you have to do is just drop the mus, so instead of Kimas, it turns into ki. And the same thing for suru, just turn shi mas, shi mas, into shi. And so once you have this mas stem, you can attach a whole range of different language to it. You don't use it by itself, but it is used in a lot of conjugations as well as additional pieces of grammar. So, the next conjugation we have here is the te form. And this is a really useful piece of language to connect sentences together and even give requests for people to do something. And so for ichidan verbs, again super simple, just drop the ru or the mas and add te. That's it. So miru to look turns into mite. Are mite. And normally when you see it used just by itself, it's some sort of request, right? The previous sentence, mite, they're saying, look at that. You can also see the te form being connected to a whole range of different types of language. Like here being connected to kudasai, please. So, tabete kudasai, please eat. Takotoshi-san to tabete kudasai. So the te form is a very useful piece of conjugation. You're going to be seeing this all over the place. Now, there is actually a te form in polite speech as well. Instead of mas, now we have mashite. And so all you have to do is drop the mas and add mashite. Like here, oboe mashite, to remember something. So in this piece of dialogue, we actually see the te form being used in the middle of two clauses. I learnt how to play B and D, and, so the te is almost like a comma, and I also obtained these cards. And sometimes it even is just left hanging, implying more to come, but maybe you're not stating it. So like here, kikoeru, or kikoemas, to be able to hear something, in the te form would be so here he said he could hear some screams, right? But it has this kind of dot dot dot. He's not finishing what he's saying. The te form implies that something else may come, but it's not always clearly stated what. Like here, I could hear some screams, dot 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 dot. Perhaps he has more to say, but he's holding back for some reason. So to create the te form with gordan verbs, it's a little bit trickier and it depends again on the ending sound of the verb. So instead of simply just adding the te like you do for ichidan verbs, here, depending on the sound, you have to add a different kind of conjugation. For example, if a verb ends in an u, tsu, or ru, then you have to add a small little tsu in between the te and the stem. So iu to say, just have that first part, the i, and it's i te. So iu to say turns into i te, with that small tsu. It's like a small little gap in between you saying the two different sounds. I and te, i te. What 
無事だって言ってよ。お、待つ。The t o sound 待って。わか、ちょっと待って。後で話してよね。ずっと後でな。待ってよ。Or like the ru ending. Remember, not all ru verbs are ichidan, like for example, kaeru to go home. Well, u, tsu, and ru add the small tsu and then the te after the stem. So, kaeru turns into kaete. Papa tachi ni mitsukaru mai ni, so ro so ro kaete. For verbs ending in a su sound, like hanasu, then you need to turn that su into shite. So, hanasu turns into hanashite. Ja, hanashite a geru ne. お願いです、メディさん。あの子と話してあげてくれませんか Now, for verbs ending in a ku sound, like kiku, to hear, well, what you need to do is get the verb stem. So, kiku, just drop that ku, you just have the ki, and then attach i te. So, it's like ki i te. Ki te. It's like a long i sound. Ki te. Minna ki te. Watashi. Now we have some of these verbs that end in this kind of dakuten. This is kind of a messy sound. So instead of ki ku, it's iso gu. The ku and gu. They actually have the same kind of conjugation rules where you have kiku, ki te. But this time, instead of putting it in the te form, you actually have to put it into kind of almost a de form. Iso gu. Turns into isoi de. Degucha kochi, isoi de. Isoi de, isoi de. And so, with new ending verbs, as we just saw here with shin de, you need to follow the stem with n de. Shin de. So, that's any verb that ends in a nu sound. Shin de. Shinu, shin de. Arata mo shitte o rareru yo ni. Piccolo san ga shin de dragon ball mo nakunatte shimai. Same thing here with bu. This is another one of those voiced sounds. It's a bit muddy, right? So, erabu, to choose, that would be erande. So, this nde comes after the stem. Erabu, era, erande. Watashi to tsuriya u fuku o erande ne? Wakatta. So, on na koto iwazu ni. Sa, erande. And the final sound you might see verbs being ended in is mu. Like, for example, nomu to drink or yomu to read. Well, it's the same conjugation as the last two, you just add nde after the stem. So, yo nde. Yomu turns into yonde. So, as you can see, the Gordan verbs are a little bit trickier with how they're actually conjugated. Even now, with just the te form, it's already a lot more complicated than the Ichidan verbs. But just remember that it's all based on the sound that the verb ends in. U, tsu, and ru get conjugated with a small tsu in the middle. So, iu turns into itte. Matsu, to wait, turns into matte. Kaeru, to go home, turns into kaete. Replace the ku in the ku ending verbs with ite, kite. Replace the su with su ending verbs with shite, hanashite. Replace the gu with gu ending verbs like oyoide or isoide. And then finally, with nu, bu, and mu ending verbs, just replace the last part with nde. So, shinu, shinde. Asobu, asonde. Yasumu, yasunde. Now, there is one exception, and that's the verb iku, to go. When iku goes into the te form, it's not how you would imagine the ku ending sounds do. Like, kiku to listen turns into ki te. But iku to go doesn't. Instead, you just do the small tsu, then the te. That's just one exception you need to be careful of for iku to go. Iku to go in the te form is itte. So, like we can see here, itte kudasai. Please go.
And both the two exceptions, kuru to come and suru to do, also have their own conjugations for the te form. And for the two exception verbs, kuru and suru, all you need to do is get the mas stem, so ki and shi, and then add te. Kuru in the te form is kite. Ousama, chotto kochi kite. And suru in the te form is shite. Nayami goto ga attara, renraku shite. And this sudo verb can both be used just by itself to do, or it can even be attached to these nouns. These are known as sudo verbs. And so it's a noun following with sudo. It means to do that noun. Like here in Final Fantasy VII, gaman is to persevere, to put up with something. Gaman shite here is put up with it, okay? And so as you can see here, the te form can also be used multiple times in the same sentence to kind of show the sequential order of events. So like in this example, first you get a job, then you fall in love, then you get married, then dun 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 dun. And this is why it's kind of like a comma. It's almost like separating two different clauses in a sentence. You do this, and then you do this. <laughs> The polite te form is, as you can imagine, you still use this mas stem. So, ki, and then you just add mashte. Ki mashte. Sono tasketa onna no ko wa senjitsu jimu ni kimashite ne. O shi, shimashite. Shuetto nara wakatte kureru ki ga shimashite ne. The next conjugation we have here is the past tense in Japanese, also known as the ta form. And this is super easy. All you have to do is just replace te with ta. And now you've created the past tense. That's it. So for example, here with the ichidan verbs, it's very, very simple. Miru, to look, just turns into mita. I saw. Ah, so like here in Witcher 3, I saw a woman. Josei o mita. Or like here in Final Fantasy 16, I saw him. And like here, this is the first time I've seen a real one. And just like before, if we want to make this polite, instead of mimas, it's mimashita. So you just replace mas with mashita. This is the polite way to say that you saw something. So, miru, mita, mimas, mimashita. Every ichidan verb is exactly the same, just drop the stem and add the conjugation. Now, good news, the past tense form is much easier now that you've learned the te form. For the past tense form for all of these godan verbs, just replace the te with ta, or replace the de with da. So, te with ta. Like, itte turns into itta. I said. Kiku to hear, kiite, turns into Kita. Oyogu to swim turns into oyoide, so oyoida. Bokchan, mota puri oyoida? Hanasu to talk turns into hanashte, so hanashta, talked. Teme sono koe, saki denwa de hanashta yaroga. Motsu to hold turns into motte, so the past tense form is motta. Tanin no jinsei ni kyomi o motta koto wa nai. The boss ni wa kyomi o motta. Shinu to die turns into shinde, so the past tense form is shinda. Taisa, kiteru ka? Koitsu mo shinda zo! Erabu to choose turns into erande, so in the past tense form it's eranda. Yomu to read turns into yonde, so yonda. Kaeru to return, 
kaete turns into kaeta. So with that small tsu, kaeta. Okaasan wa hoshi ni kaeta dake da kara sabishiku nanka nai ってこと Hoshi ni kaeta. Seimei gak no kangai kata da. So the past tense form for godan verbs isn't too difficult once you've learnt the te form. Just replace te with ta or de with da. And just like we saw with all of the other verbs, to make the past tense form, just replace that te with ta. So, kite turns into kita. I came. Just be careful, it's not kita with a small tsu with a gap. No, it's just kita. And suru turns into shite. So it's shita. Ah, Kurada! Mata mushi shita! Hmm. Na, nanda? Itai nani o shita nda? The polite form is very easy. We just have that same stem, so ki or shi, and then you just add mashita. That's it. So, kimashita. I came. Anata o tome ni kimashita! I did. Ah, now the next conjugation we have here is the continuous form. Teiru. You will often see this referred to as kind of like the progressive form. I like to look at it as the continuous form. And what this often implies is that an action is in progress, it is continuously being done. And this can be both used to talk about things that you're doing right now, but also things that are in a certain state. So you could use this continuous form both for saying, I'm studying right now, but you could also talk about the state of something, like, he is dead. So he's in the state of being dead. The continuous form is used in both of these situations in Japanese. Another very common conjugation you'll see in Japanese. So instead of miru, to see something, maybe you're looking at it right now. You could say, miteiru. Mite so all you have to do is get that stem and add teiru, and you've got the continuous form. Now, quite often you will actually see the i in teiru kind of contracted into just Teru. This is extremely common in anime, video games, manga, but also extremely common in casual speech. So like we can see here in Dragon Guard, the miteru turns into miteru. And so just know it holds the exact same meaning, just one of them is a little bit more formal and the other one is a little bit more colloquial, casual, spoken. It's just kind of contracted speech. Miteiru and miteru, same thing. And just so you know, this iru is actually a verb by itself. It kind of means to exist. So you're existing looking, for example. Miteiru, you're existing in a state of look. And so if you were to further conjugate this expression, for example, into the negative form or the past negative, just know that you need to conjugate iru into whatever form you want to conjugate. Now looking at the continuous form, or the progressive form, if you remember teiru, well, now that you know the te form, it's very very easy, just put the verb into the te form followed with iru. That's it. So, itte turns into itteiru, saying. Kiku, to hear, turns into kiteiru, I'm listening. Ah, kiteiru. Isogu, to hurry, turns into isoideiru. Hanasu, to talk, turns into hanashiteiru. 
matsu to wait turns into matteiru. Guzu guzu suru na yo! Jikan ga nai n da zo! Panero ga matteru n da! Shinu to die turns into shindeiru. Snake wa 2 nen mae no tanka chinbutsu jiken de shindeiru. Shadow mosetsu jiken de sono na o katatta grey fox wa sude ni shindeiru. Yobu to call turns into yondeiru. Ore wa iku! Nan da to? ああ、読む彼女はその町の家の近くに住んでいます。シルとノーターンズインツシッテイル。シルカ。目は今死んでる状態だ。もう一度死んだらどうなるのか知ってるか。帰るとリターンターンズインツカエテイル。ジェシーたちもう帰
Ah, now we have the negative form for Gordon verbs. Now, if you remember, Gordon verbs, to turn them in the nigh form, all you need to do is have it end with an a uh sound before nigh. So, you to say would turn into iwa nai. You, iwa nai. So the u turns into wa and then nai. Iwa nai to not say. Shibari wa mo nani mo iwa nai. Shinpai mo kaketaku nai. Dakara iwa nai. So we can see it has that a uh sound, so it's a goldan verb. Kiku to hear. Again, we need that a uh vowel before the nai, so kiku turns into kika. I'm not listening. Isogu to hurry turns into isoga nai. So the gu into ga. Isoga nai. Su, like in hanasu. So hanasu turns into hanasa nai. Hanasa nai. Won't say. Motiron hanasa nai wa. Tada. Tsu turns into ta, so like medatsu turns into medatanai. Yatsura no konseki ga meo ni medatanai no ga gyaku ni kini kakaru. Shinu shinanai. Hero ってのは死なないんだ。だからまだ私は死なない。あなたも死なせない。俺さ、この命をくれたホムラのために。Asobu turns into asobanai. Bu into ba. Asobanai. Nomu to drink, so the mu turns into ma. Nomanai to not drink. And here, iru, but this is to need something. This is a different iru from the ichidan iru to exist. This is iru to need. This iru is a godan. And so we can see it's iranai. Iru to exist, like for example, benkyo shite iru, studying, you could say benkyo shite inai. The iru that we see in the continuous form, that's actually the iru for existing. That's an ichidan verb. But this iru here is a godan verb. And we can see because it's iranai, not inai. So, iranai, you don't need. This comes from iru, to need. So, as you can see for godan verbs, the very important rule is that if it has an a uh sound before the nai, then we know it's a godan verb. And so, in order to make the nai form, just change the final sound of a godan verb into an a uh sound, and then follow it with nai. Kikanai, nomanai, iranai. Now, there is one extra exception for the nai form, and that is for the verb aru to exist. <laughs> so, actually, the negative form of aru is nai. And so, this is a little bit irregular, right? This doesn't follow any of the previous rules that you've learned. Aru means to exist, nai means to not exist. <laughs> So just remember that this verb behaves a little bit different from the rest of the verbs. Because it literally is nai, just in the positive form. Aru to exist, nai to not exist. And with this same exception, the polite form for aru is arimas. And it just follows the normal conjugation that you would expect for the polite negative. Arimas, arimasen. Kuru in the negative form is just konai. It's not kinai, it's konai. So just be careful about that konai. This breaks any other rule that we've learned previously. Suru is thankfully easier, it's just shinai. So you just add nai at the end of the stem. Shinai. Shinai. Kinishinai de nen no tameyo. Kitigre. Mada hanashtinai kotogaru. 
Okay, so we've learned the past form, ta, and we've learned the negative form, nai. So next, how would you say something like you did not, the past negative? Well, in Japanese, this would be nakata. Again, we're just adding the conjugation to the stem. So, minai to not look, minakata. I didn't look, or I didn't see. Tabenai to not eat, tabenakata. I didn't eat. KGB dewa tabenakata no ga. So just replace nai with nakata. And now in the polite form, we have tabemasen, so remember, to not eat. And all you have to do is just add deshita at the end. This is the polite past. So tabemasen turns into tabemasen deshita. I did not eat. And so you might be able to guess, mimasen, to not look, turns into mimasen deshita. And just like before, now we can turn the past into the past negative. So, not say, iwanai, can turn into iwanakata, did not say. Kigatsuku, so we see it is a ku sound. So the negative is kigatsuka nai. Kigatsuka nai, and then the past negative, kigatsuka nakata. Utsu to shoot, uta nai, uta nakata. Didn't shoot. Nomu to drink, noma nai. Noma nai turns into noma nakata. I didn't drink. Same thing with the past negative. Konai konakata. Crowd san konakata sne. Shinai shinakata. Naze renak shinakata. Mantis wa mask wo shite ita tame ni kansen shinakata no kamo shiremasen. Uruk mo hatsubiyo shinakata. Okay, now we're moving on to a little bit trickier piece of Japanese language here. So, the passive form in Japanese is often used to express that something is being done. Like, not by a clear actor, it's just, it's happening. And this passive form can both be used to express that some sort of regretful action has been done upon you, like in a passive way. It could simply be a neutral statement, just it has been done. And it can be even used in kind of honorific, respectful language to express that respect. To be seen, for example. Instead of to look, that would be miru. To be seen by somebody, that would be mirareru. And so for ichidan verbs, all you have to do is just again the stem and then add rareru. That's it. So miru, to look, turns into mirareru. To be looked at or to be seen. And it's called passive because it's not clear who is the actual actor of this verb. It can be you could be seen by somebody, but it doesn't always have to actually state clearly who you're being seen by. So like here in Fire Emblem, I get embarrassed when I get looked at. So when I'm looked at, teremas, I get a bit embarrassed. And just very quickly, now that we know the past form, just ta, well, you can actually do the same thing for this conjugation and many other conjugations. So instead of to be seen by someone, you could say I was seen by someone. So the past tense form of the passive, midareta. So like here in Persona 4, I wonder if I was seen. So here at the onsen. And the passive form is even used here in this kind of news broadcast saying that he is believed to be armed, or more literally, he is seen to be armed. So, the passive form for Ichidan verbs, very simple, just drop the ru and put rareru. 
And the passive form for godan verbs is actually very similar to what we learnt with ichidan verbs. If you remember, it's rareru. But here, for godan verbs, as we can see for kiku to listen, it needs to be kikareru. So the last part, the redu, is exactly the same, but the first sound, the ra, actually comes from ru. If you remember, all ichidan verbs, they're all ru verbs. So the ru turns into a ra sound, and then redu. That would be an ichidan way of doing it. And the same thing is true here with godan verbs. You need to make the first sound an a sound, followed by redu. So, nice and easy, now that we just learnt the negative form, well, you just do the exact same thing, but instead of adding the nai, right, kiku, kikanai, just don't add the nai, and instead add redu. That's how you do the passive form for godan verbs. So, kikanai no kikaredu, to be heard. <laughs> So, utsu, to shoot, utanai, to not shoot, utareru, to be shot. Mu, like here in umu, to give birth to, umareru. Or like here in Dragon Ball Kakarot, korosareru. Or in the polite form, korosaremasu. So you just change the final sound of a godan verb into an a sound, just like you do with the nai form, and then add redu. That's how you add the passive form for godan verbs. Kikareru, matareru, utareru, umareru. To be dun dun dun. To be heard, to be born, to be shot. Now for the passive form for kuru. Kuru turns into korareru. So again, we have to be careful. It's not kirareru, it's korareru. But suru is much easier. Now we just have suru turns into sareru. That's it. So the passive form for suru is sareru. This is actually quite similar to verbs that end in the su sound, like korosu, to kill. Korosareru would be to be killed. It's the same conjugation here for suru. So, like here, kaifuku sareru, before it recovers. Next, we have the causative form. So this is kind of showing the cause for something. And this can be roughly translated as to either make someone do something, or let someone do something. And this depends on the context, which one it is. The meaning does change a bit, right? Make is much more forceful than let, but in Japanese, they're both expressed here with the causative form. And the causative form in Japanese is saseru. So we just saw rareru for the passive. Now we have saseru, the causative. So taberu, just to eat. If someone forced you to eat your breakfast, for example, that would be tabe saseru. So to make someone eat. And so again, like here in Yakuza 6, uh, making a child eat something. So tabe saseru. So it could be both a forceful make someone do something, tabe saseru, to make you eat, but it could also just be to let you do a certain action. Now to turn saseru, the causative form, into the polite form, all you need to do is just change saseru into sase mas. So the ru gets replaced with mas. Saseru, to make someone, sase mas. 
to make someone in polite speech. So like here, shirabe sasemasu, to make or to let someone investigate something. Now it's the same thing here, we want that last seru part, but the first part, like with the ichidan verb, it's sa seru, that sa we just want to change to an a sound for whatever verb we're using. So iu to say, iwa nai, right, to not say, iwa seru, to make someone say. So like here in Final Fantasy 16, don't make me say it over and over again. You are seru now. Or like here in Final Fantasy 14, if you're going to make me listen, so make me listen, kikaseru. Or to make me wait, mataseru. Like Snake's famous line in Metal Gear Solid. For su ending godan verbs like omoi dasu to remember, this turns into omoi dasaseru to make remember. Owaru to finish owaraseru. But here we can see it used in the mus form. So just like always, you can replace that ru with mus to make it polite. So mas. Let's make this finished. Or nomu to drink. Maybe you're wanting to make someone drink something. Nomaseru. So the causative form for godan verbs is just have that a sound before seru. Kikaseru, nomaseru, mataseru. The causative form to make or to let someone do something. Here with kuru, it turns into ko saseru. So it still has that saseru to make someone, just the ki is ko just like some of the other conjugations we just saw. So just be careful, it's not kisaseru, it's kosaseru. Suru is super easy, again now we just have saseru instead of suru. So there's nothing fancy you need to do with suru, right? You just turn suru into saseru. That's to do something turning into to make do something. And it can be used both to make someone do something or to let someone do something. Okay, now we have one of the most difficult pieces of conjugation. So you've learnt the passive to be seen for example mirareta mirareru and you've learnt the causative to make someone do something saseru tabe saseru but you can actually combine both of these conjugations in japanese to create the causative passive form so rather than to make someone do something it's that you were made to do something by someone else. <laughs> so it has that causative being made to do something and the passive by someone else being made to do something. And this is sase rareru. So saseru to make someone do something. Drop the ru, so sase, and then put rareru. <laughs> That's why it's the causative passive form. Sase rareru. So let's say, for example, here, you were made to look at something. Someone forced you to look at something. You would say, misase rareru. So here, Frieza is being made to watch this merry parade. <laughs> or like here in Fire Emblem Three Hopes, to be made to see a lot of painful experiences. And so if you were made to eat something, you could turn taberu into tabe sase rareru. Actually, when I was eating a 
族が一緒に出てきたんですよそうか実はね俺もファウザンでいろいろと考えさせられた So this is definitely a tricky piece of conjugation, but just remember it's the causative passive. Causative comes first, saseru, passive comes next. And to combine them, you just need to drop the ru that's in the middle, so sase rareru, to be made to do something, or to be let to do something. So the causative passive is first the causative, making someone do something. So remember, for example, kikaseru, to make someone hear. But now you want to have kikasareru. So this is the passive form to be made to do something, to be made to listen. Rather than to make someone listen, kikaseru. Here's to be made to listen, kikasareru. まさかマサオミからそんな言葉を聞かされるとはなヒナはシンドウから真実を聞かされる Or like here in Final Fantasy XVI to be made to work 働かされる前の主人に散々働かされて足を痛めてしまってね Here we can see to be made to wait 待たされる Or the past tense 待たされた To be made to wait. <laughs> Now, one thing to be a bit careful about is for Godan verbs that end in a su. These are actually quite rare and follow a different conjugation rule. The reason why is because if you followed the normal Godan rule where you have the a sound and then sa, it would sound very weird. It would have a double sa. Like hanasu, hanasa sareru. It doesn't work. And so it's not used like this in Japanese. Instead, su follows the same conjugation rules as actually suru does, which is simply just sasereru. However, just so you know, this conjugation is very rare. I actually haven't been able to find any su ending verbs in over a hundred video games that actually use this conjugation. And in fact, if you tried to force using it, it might even sound a little bit unnatural. A lot of people would just opt to say it in a different way or just use the causative form in the past tense instead of putting it in the passive form. So you're much more likely to actually see the causative form in the past tense for verbs that end in su, like for example, omoi dasu, to remember. You might see omoi dasareta quite commonly, but you're very unlikely to ever really see omoi dasasereru. <laughs> It's just very rarely used. And so, for example, this verb, ikasareta, This is actually kind of a causative passive. In modern Japanese, this verb ikasu, to make or to let someone live, is actually a conjugation of a very old verb for iku, to live, but it's not used anymore. Just this causative conjugation is used as in just a normal baseline verb. And so here, ikasareta, to be let to live, Could technically be seen as kind of the causative passive. But just so you know, nowadays no one uses the verb iku to live. Instead, they use ikasu to let or to make live, and then here in the passive ikasareta. So the causative passive is again that combination of the causative form to make or to let someone do something, and then the passive to be, so by somebody. And to do that with godan verbs, you just need to have the a sound followed by sareru, kikasareru, nomasareru, matasareru. The very tricky combination of the causative and the passive is kosasereru and sasereru. Now, actually, I have not been able to find a single example sentence in hundreds of video games for kosasereru. <laughs> not even kosasereta.、Uh, it's incredibly, incredibly rare to be made to come. It certainly does exist, but I have not been able to find it in any examples whatsoever. But just know, kosasereru is the causative passive of kuru, to come. And suru is sasereru. Again, saseru to make, rareru to be, so sasereru to be made. So, like here, for the boat to be made to be finished. Or in Dragon Ball, in the original history, we were supposed to be made wiped out. Or here, to be made to cooperate.
The next conjugation we have is a very simple one. This is the command form. When you're telling someone to do something, you're ordering someone to do something very, very strong. Here for ichidan verbs, all you have to do is replace the ru with ro. And that makes it imperative, very, very strong. Telling someone to do something. So, miru, to look, would be miro. Look. Are miro. おい、見ろ。これじゃ壁まで戻れねえぞ。見ろよ。あの腐ったピザのせいで下の人間がどんなに苦しんでることが。やめろ。やめろ。やめろ。やめろ。やめろ。やめろ。just know that this imperative, this command form, is very, very strong. The softer way would actually be just to use the te form. So instead of saying, yamero, you could actually just say, yamete. Or instead of saying, miro, you could say, mite. Like we saw in all of the examples for the te form. Another way to give a little bit more polite, softer ordering, instead of using ro, like yamero, or instead of using yamete, which is a bit more of a request, you can still express that kind of ordering someone to do something in a bit of a softer way here with nasai. And all you have to do is just attach nasai to the mas stem. So, yame nasai would be the more softer way of saying yamero. Yame nasai, Alexei! Yame nasai. Okay, now we have the imperative form, the command form for Godan verbs. If you remember for Ichidan verbs, all you had to do was just change the ru into ro. But now with Godan verbs, we need to change that final sound into an e sound. So iu to say turns into ie. Say it. Kiku turns into Kike. Listen. Matsu to wait turns into Mate. Wait. Mate, mate, ore da yo. And yasumu to rest turns into yasume. So all of these examples here are in the imperative form where you're kind of ordering someone to do something. So here, ordering someone forcefully, say it, ie. Or forcefully hearing it, kike. Or forcefully wait, mate. That's what the imperative form is doing. And all you need to do is just change that last sound in the godan to an e sound. The imperative ordering form for kudu is actually koi. So again, breaking all of the rules we just learned previously, koi. Koi. But just remember, this is a bit more of a ruder way of asking someone to do something. It's very, very strong, right? Koi, come here. Hiroma ni koi to itte da na. If you wanted to be a bit more politer, you would just say kite, use the te form. But if you want to be strong, koi. Suru to do turns into shiro. So again, we see a similar kind of use here with the ru verbs turning into ro at the end. Shiro, do it. The next conjugation we have is the ba form. This is known as the conditional form. And what this means is that if the first thing, then the second thing. And this ba form can both mean if or when. That's why it has a condition, the conditional form. And so for ichidan verbs, like always, just get the stem and then put the conjugation. Just put reba with the stem. So deru turns into dereba, if or when you leave. 
So like here in Final Fantasy 16, when you leave East Pool, East Opuro Dereba, beyond there is the Black Zone. East Opuro Dereba, Sono Sakiwa Kuro no Ittai desu. So you can see the condition, right? If or when you leave, then there'll be the black area. Or like here again, mireba sugu wakaru. So if or when you look, mireba, you'll know it. So you know it when you see it. Again, just attach the stem to reba. Mireba, tabereba. It's all the same for Ichidan verbs. Like here, miseru to show, misereba. When or if you show them, then they'll be able to help you out. Now for the hypothetical conditional form for Godan verbs. If you remember last time, we had to add reba for Ichidan verbs. However, this time, the final sound of the verb needs to be changed into an e sound, and then simply add ba. And we just did that with the imperative form. So it's the exact same conjugation as the imperative form, you just add ba at the end. So au to meet would be aeba, if we meet. Hino dominanto ni aeba. Yeah, to say, right? Remember that? Ieba, if I said it. So same conjugation as yeah, to say, just add the ba at the end. But this doesn't have any feeling of like force or anything. This is just if I did the action. If I said it, dun dun dun. So like here, hataraku, the ku turns into ke, hatarakeba. If you work, then you fed. Or like here, iku to go, the ku turns into ke, so ikeba. If you go, where if I go, can I get some? Same thing here, ku for kiku, kikeba. If I ask, so like here, if you ask Shamia, maybe she'll teach you. Matsu to wait, mateba, if I waited. Nomu to drink turns into nomeba, if you drank. So the ba form is quite easy. All you need to do is just change the final sound to an e and then put ba. Ieba if I were to say, aeba if we were to meet, nomeba if I was to drink, shineba if I was to die, and so on. Thankfully, the conditional ba form is actually really, really easy. Kuru and suru, you just replace the last ru with reba. That's it. So kureba and sureba. So like here, if we've come this far, it's just a little bit more. Or if we've come this far, it'll be all right. So kureba here is the bar form for kuru, and sureba is the bar form for suru. So do sureba i literally would be what would be good if I did it. But you often see it meaning just what should I do. But literally, what would be good if I did it. So like here in Kingdom Hearts, he's saying, if I did what, can I become small? Now that's weird English, but this is just literal. What he's saying is, what should I do to be able to become small? Do sureba, if I do what or if I do how, am I able to become small? Do sureba i, what would be good if I did it? Do sureba i da? Yami ni kokoro o hiraku no da. Sore dake de i. And we actually have another conditional form here with the 
cutter form. This can be used in the same way as what we saw previously with the ba form for if or when, but the tada form can also be used to express after. So like for example this sentence, natsu ga kittara nihon ni iku. This can be both translated as if summer comes, I will go to Japan, or when summer comes, I will go to Japan, or even after summer comes, I will go to Japan. Generally speaking, the ba form is just used for hypotheticals, but the tada form can both be used for hypotheticals and actual conditions. Remember that summer coming isn't really a hypothetical situation, it's something that will happen. And to conjugate the conditional tada form is incredibly easy, just get the past tense, the ta form, and just add ra. That's it. And this is true for every different type of verb, whether it's godan or ichidan or even the exceptions. Just put a verb in the past tense followed by ra, and you've created the conditional tada form. So, miru to look, mita, saw, mitara, when or if you saw. Taberu to eat, tabeta, ate, tabetara, if or when you ate, or even after eating. Tabete i? Dame yo grato ni? You to say, ita, said, itara. What if I said, Omega Hosinda, got Yada to itara. Kiku to hear, kita, heard, kitara. If you heard, Karera ga honto ni sonzai suridanante. Nugu to take off something like clothes. Nuida removed. Nuidara if you took off the clothes. Fuku o nuidara, jikan nai no yo. Ore wa kyaku jia nai nda. Shinu to die is shindara if you die or when you die. Omae ga shindara, kami sama mo shinjau daro. Hitotsu dake oshiete kure. Ore ga shindara. And of course, it's the same for the two irregular verbs kuru and suru. So the past tense of kuru is kita. So kitara. If dun 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 came. Koko made kitara, mo anshin. Taks o wasurere na. Ah. Mata taks ga kitara dou suru. And suru, shita, shitara. So, if you were to do something. Okay, we're almost finished. We have two more conjugations to look at in Japanese, and we will have gone through every different type of conjugation there is. So, the second to last conjugation is the potential form, and this is kind of to be able to do that action. And so to create this potential form, all you need to do is just put rareru after the stem of a verb. So here, mirareru means that he's able to look. Now, hang on a second, let's rewind a bit. The passive form is also mirareru. Yes, that's correct. For ichidan verbs, the passive form and the potential form actually is the same. Tricky, right? <laughs> so mirareru could be to be seen by someone, or it could be to be able to see. Hmm. So like here, I'm able to eat. Taberareru. Now, this does make it a little bit confusing, having the passive and the potential have the exact same conjugation. However, luckily, in casual speech, to make it a bit easier for everyone, when used in the potential form only, it's actually contracted sometimes. So instead of mirareru, to be able to see, you might often see it as just mireru. <laughs> Or like here in AI Somnium 2, can you see the mentioned video? So, dōga mireru. So thankfully that does actually help here for ichidan verbs. 
So like here in this example, in more casual speech, can you see the mentioned video? So they could say, Doga mirareru? But here it's a bit more casual situation, so they just say, Doga mirareru? They're both totally fine. Just remember that mirareru is a little bit more formal speech and mirareru is a bit more casual. Okay, and now to turn this into the polite form. So remember, the potential is just rareru or reru. You might already be able to guess what the polite form is. Instead of rareru, it's raremas. Or like here, you can see some sort of decoration. So like here in Lost Judgment, maybe we can investigate. So, shirabe raremas. And so the exact same rules would apply that we learned previously with the negative form, right? Masen, it's the same thing. So if you wanted to say you're not going to be able to do something, you could say verb raremasen. So like here in Final Fantasy 16, we see kotae raremasen. I'm not able to respond. And now we have the potential form that was a little bit tricky with the Ichidan verbs. If you remember, they have the same conjugation as the potential form. And so this time with the Godan verbs, what we want to do to make the potential form is again change that last sound to an E sound and then add RU at the end. That's it. So iu to say would be ieru to be able to say. So what's the potential form for to hear? To be able to hear, kiku would be kikeru. Iku to go again, ikeru to be able to go. Yakuni tatsu to help, so tatsu, so it needs to turn into a te. Yakuni tateru to be able to help. Or utsu to shoot, uteru to be able to shoot. Yatsura wa honto ni kaku o uteru no ga. <laughs> or yomu to read. Yomeru, can you read? So mu turns into me, yomeru. So the potential form for Godan verbs just change that last sound into an e sound and then follow with ru. Kiku, kikeru. Nomu, nomeru. Now here with the potential form for kuru and suru, we have a little bit more rule breaking. So the potential form for kuru is the same, korareru, to be able to come. So like here, are you able to come to the East City Hospital? So it's korareru. And just like always, you can contract it in more casual speech. So instead of korareru, it's just koreru. Suru, however, goes in a completely different direction. The potential form of suru is actually, in fact, dekiru, to be able to do. So you often learn this as a completely different word, right? Dekiru as a verb by itself, but it is actually the potential form of suru to be able to do something. So like here, then you can escort me. Or like here in Attack on Titan, if there's anyone who can change something, then that person can surely throw away what's dear to them. Or like here with Aerith, I can feel safe. Or we can meet up with Barrett. Gouryu Dekiru. 
ここ行けばバレットと合流できるはず Okay, we've finished most of the really difficult conjugations in Japanese, and now we just have the final piece of conjugation that we're going to be learning in this video, and that is the volitional form. And this pretty much just means that you're showing the will or volition to do something, often seen translated as let's, although not always. So, like here in triangle strategy, let's eat something. Taberu turns into tabeyo. So, all you have to do is just replace the root with. You'll often see it used connected with the ka particle as well, like tabeoka. Instead of let's eat, it's more like shall we eat. Or like here in Kingdom Hearts 3, so nigeru to run, just replace the ru with yo. So, nigeyo, let's escape. And finally, the polite volitional form. So instead of yo, we have masho. So, tabe yo, let's eat, turns into tabe masho, let's eat, just in polite speech. And sometimes you might even see that final u actually dropped in more casual colloquial speech, like here in Boku no Natsu Yasumi. It's just let's hurry up and eat, tabe masho. Mama, sa, hayaku tabe masho. But it's the same thing. Yo is the volitional form, and masho is the polite volitional. And if you remember with the ichidan verbs, we needed to add yo u, yo. This time, we just want to change the final sound into an o sound and then add u. So, iu would be yo. Kiku to hear would be kiko. Let's hear. Matsu to wait would be mato. Wakata. Koko de mato. Nomu to drink no more. Let's drink. And if we did want to say this in a polite form, what we need to do is just like all polite forms in the Gordon verbs, we need to turn it into the mus stem. So, ikimas. Iki. And then we just add masho, just like before. So, the volitional. Let's go. Ikimasho. Ikimasho. Watashitachi ni wa mada yaru koto ga aru. Watashitachi mo ikimasho, Clive. So da na. And finally, we have the volitional form for kuru is koyo. And suru is shiyo. So, ko yo and shi yo. So, like here in Persona 4, let's come here. Koko ni ko yo. Ja, asta kara, boka go wa dekiru dake koko ni ko yo. Ah, mochino, gakko nai hi mo na. Or he used a bit more of an advanced piece of grammar, no matter how many enemies come. Dore dake ko yo tomo. Teki ga dore dake ko yo tomo. Mochi kotae te misemashou. And it can even be seen connected to the te form. So, te kuru to come to do something, but here it's the volitional form, te koyo. This is kind of like showing the will to do something, the volition to do something. So, do you think you would come back to this world? Kaete koyo to omotta no? Kono sekai ni kaete koyo to omotta no? And finally, suru turns into shio. So, dou shio. What should I do? Or what will I do? Dou shio. Or simply just let's. Like here, Ido Shio. Let's move. So, an absolutely gigantic Otsukare Sum, everybody. You did an amazing job. That was so much information. But we have now gone through every single verb type and conjugation in Japanese. There's a whole bunch of different uses of grammar that you can use now that you know all of these conjugations. Now you know how to conjugate all verbs in Japanese. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hopefully, it wasn't too overwhelming. Hopefully, the video wasn't too long. I'm not sure. I have a feeling this video could have been maybe one to two hours already. It's taken a few hours just to record it. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you've learned some Japanese. A huge thanks to the executive producer, Tea Drinker3000, for requesting this video. Every month, I take one request from the executive producers that I'll actually be making on the channel. This was one of those requests, and I think it turned out to be an absolutely amazing video. So, thanks so much for requesting this video. And also, 
thank you to absolutely everybody who's supporting the channel, whether it just be likes, comments, subscribes, or the people who really love the channel and join us on the Game Gengo Discord community, both through Patreon or directly through the website where you can get help with your Japanese studies, hang out, chat with people, and you can get both direct contact with me and everyone else in the community. So if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, come join us on the Game Gengu Discord community. Hope you have fun with your Japanese studies. And as always, I'll see you again in the next video. See you guys.